Hello, and welcome to the Handy Capable Black Woman Podcast. I am a woman, I am of color, and I am handy capable. But most importantly, I am human. Hello, hello. How How is everybody? Either how is your coffee tasting or breakfast sandwich? Oh, I'm craving one right now. Or how is lunch? Um, are you getting your favorite sandwich or pasta, you know? Or how is dinner how are those oh i hope you got some carbs because yeah it's like i'm kind of on a diet i'm you know but anyway whatever meal whatever beverage you're enjoying i hope you at least have a snack while i have story time for you and i know i've done a lot of dating talks lately again especially since i'm writing my novels and with especially my first two novels my main characters are going through different types of relationships and toxic relationships. I have lived through a lot of toxicity, especially having a disability, especially being a woman of color and being defined as having to be a certain type of entity, type of woman. And yeah, so of some of my episodes that I'm going to be working on is what's the definition of a black woman? That is an episode I'm going to be working on. Also the nerdy side and oh, I'm going to be having new episodes on the handy capable black nerd very soon. It's just, if you guys knew how much stuff I'm working on right now, but be is like I know some people are like, what? You have another channel? Yeah, it's like um, I'm a pinch of loco. Yeah, just a pinch. Um, is I wanted to separate my book readings or um, my opinions and like there's so many things I wanted to do, but I thought it would be kind of um, odd, like I thought they would be for different demographics. So I was like, okay, no, this needs to be on a channel. This needs to be on a channel. That needs to be on a channel. And now I'm just like, okay, why on earth did I do that? So yeah, it's like, as a marketing professional, I did the right thing. But since I'm writing my books and then I have the podcast, which now I'm kind of glad that I'm putting the podcast together slowly, I am going to try to start recording or transferring my podcast from, oh, and hi, my podcast people that's followed me for months and everything, because now I'm also on YouTube. So this episode is both on YouTube and um, and as well as most podcast um, streams and everything. So, hey, but... Anyway, um, so trying to get the novels together and the podcast and then my children's books and activity books. I have about three new children's books that I'm trying to get ready for the holidays right now. And so, yeah, mm, breathe. <laughs> it's a lot. So, um, but anyways, like with the YouTube and everything, it's like I was, I, the way that I planned everything out. I planned it, but then I was like, oh yeah, I forgot there's only 24 hours in a day. Because then also I'm trying to work on and finish my website and the different portions of my website and how I'm going to organize everything. And I'm doing that by myself and stuff. And I'm looking for someone to create a theme song for me. So yeah the list goes on but anyways at least now you guys know what i'm working on and i will be doing some nerdy business talk i'm kind of thinking of doing that on the nerdy channel because i'm like you know what yeah that's that sounds a little nerdy and oh i've got some books that i'm going to be doing book reviews soon so it's like well i just purchased them so i'm waiting for them to come and then i'm going to start reading them but then there's another one he's a self-published author i will mention him in the book a little later but uh, i'm going to be reading and i'm going to take a different spin on my book reviews to um soon 
because I'm going to have regular book reviews and then I'm going to dive deep in like I'm going to be looking for the any personification, the symbolism, descriptions, and then I'm going to really go nerdy and I'm, I'm thinking of doing two of the nerdy versions live, but I might not. It's like I might just be a show and tell like a regular episode and everything but maybe in the future it's like maybe I could even take books from grade school and do some of those live because I think that would be kind of fun and interesting but you'll find out you'll find out later but at least now you guys know yeah I'm not bored I don't like being bored and yeah it's like I'm a pinch of loco but only a pinch not too much you know or I'm not enough loco to be on a Dateline episode. Yeah, I'll say that. But okay, this episode, um, this is probably going to be a series. So because we have an issue. Well, I think the issue might be resolving now because, well, our Congress is a hot mess. Oh, it's a, it's a hot mess. And oh, yeah, that's going to be another episode I'm going to be talking about soon, too. But... This is about the Crown Act and why we need the Crown Act. And I know um, a few episodes ago, I kind of did a, a talk, a little talk to my white cis men out there, which don't don't worry, YouTube. <laughs> I will talk. Yeah, I'm going to bring that up again because, oh, yeah, I got a lot to say to you guys. But I was like sometimes or there's been two times where I try to talk about the crown act to white cis men and it's just amazing with what I'm told or how white cis men try to tell me why it's not needed or why people of color black people are just nagging or complaining yeah it's like they literally said nagging and complaining and they said if a job doesn't want you because of your hair then you just shouldn't work there this is literally what they told me and i'm just like are you are you kidding me are you joking it's like you can't be this low you can't be this ridiculous you can't be this racist yes that's race like it's just like if you don't understand the culture and this is another reason why we need to teach representation and race and equality in schools because this is how you birth ignorance this is how you raise ignorance this is how you produce no like okay i know the re republicans aren't really my demographic cuz they're going to dis they're not going to like me for the most part i'll get over it but yeah this is how you kind of raise a lot of the republicans that are out there because majority like the white cis men i'm talking about are republican that tell me that oh well that means i should be able to go to work with a mohawk then that means i should be able to no 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 Okay, first, if you don't know what the Crown Act is, let me let you know. The Crown Act stands for Create a Respectful and Open World for Natural Hair. And it was created in 2019 because, well, I did an episode on my regular podcast. Um, actually, I can put the link um, in the YouTube. So if you want to listen, you can check it out. But it was a lawsuit that happened in Alabama went all the way up to the Alabama Supreme Court. The Alabama Supreme Court favored the company and not the woman who was qualified for the job. She got the job, but then lost the job because of her beautiful locks. Because again, America is very um, ignorant when it comes to women's natural or especially African-American women and African-American natural hair and our kind of like the culture of our hair the natural beauty tradition and things like that it's like when it comes to our, to our natural hair we have very we either have like there's level one two three and four and abc type hair is like i can try to put a picture 
in the description or put a link so you guys can learn a little bit more about it if you have any questions but it's based on like the curliness and the dryness of the our hair in a lot of african-american women we fall more under the 2c to 4c and my hair hoo -hoo, yeah i'm like um maybe a 3c 4b hair type so because yeah part different parts of my hair is different types so but it's it's like when it comes to heat damage african-american hair is like the most fragile and so it's just like flat irons and like the curling wads and even like hair dryers it's like we need the like that hair protection spray oh yeah we need that very much and that's one reason why our hair is looked at or is stereotyped more as being like shorter and everything because it can break off much more easily but if we were able to grow it naturally embrace our curls embrace our natural beauty then we would be able to have make like longer hair if we were elect some jobs don't allow afros and braids and locks or even schools schools too and that's why we have that situation in texas because they're acting ignorant and vile and stupid that's my opinion that and i'm gonna stay to my opinion but yes it's like and even though texas just passed the crown act it's like the school was like, no, we're not breaking that law. Yeah, mm -mm, mm, stop lying. Mm. In my opinion, stop lying. Stop lying. But anyway, um, so there's a little bit of um, seasoning for you. I was like, I would try to put some information on about the Crown Act in the description, but we need it to pass. Actually, it went to Congress once, but Republicans voted it down because some of the Republican Congress people said it's a stupid thing or a stupid topic, stupid thing to vote on. But um, yeah, most of the Republicans are, again, white and ignorant and naive, and they don't understand our culture. And again, this is why we need to teach equity, equality in the school, because like i know even growing up in school kids picked on me because of my hair and it's like i had to keep it in braids because okay here like i'm gonna give a few examples this is gonna be a series so don't worry but actually i'm gonna go kind of to the more future because there's an example that's better that's from a more current event right before i went full natural so throughout my life i've been told that i had bad hair terrible hair blah 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 all this stuff, other stuff so i already had a lot of mental like well technically that's kind of mental abuse because like when i looked in the mirror i was already being teased already being called ugly and so many other things and that reminds me yeah my dating nightmares oh yeah mm, i some of these men, they try their best, but they don't realize I've been bullied all my life. I got thick skin. So if you want to call me something, be creative now. Because, yeah, they're, they're still at elementary level of picking on me. I'm like, little boy, please. But anyway, so after, you know, being teased and being like, you have bad hair and, oh, you need to cut that off, blah, 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 this other stuff. And black men who is like, yeah oh yeah i just did a series about the black men and what they say but um what like when it comes to my hair oh you have in-house um skin type but you have picking cotton hair yeah my black people know what i'm talking about yeah it's like black guys stop doing that black men stop saying that it's like you keep saying, oh, black women, you're our queens, you're, you're, you're our gold, you're precious, you're beautiful, blah, blah, blah. But then, then you want to say that to our faces and you want to put us down, even though this is our, this is our natural hair, this is our natural beauty, or it's only beautiful until dot, dot, dot. It's like you want to say this to me and ridicule me and put me down until dot 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 if it was really beautiful or if you really thought of like because 
well yeah i'm gonna do another episode on what black men have told me in the situations because yeah but after all of that i i was thinking of going natural but then still trying to find a job and a lot of the jobs they didn't want natural or whatever and so it's like i was i'm wearing some wins wearing wigs doing my thing whatever but i was like you know what let me go to the beauty school so then i can at least get a deep treatment and it's like you know how some of the um, beauticians you know they get in there on that scalp and it's just like a, a a head massage like you won't believe it's like since i was working on grad school at this time and actually it was my second master's i was working on so i was stressed out was doing the promotional modeling blah 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 it's like i just i thought i needed a treat and so i went to the beauty school and I met this one beautician, you know, she's all in the scalp. She's getting in. I'm like, oh, okay, she good. She's African-American woman. So I know she knows about the hair because we have, you know, similar hair. Like, well, I don't know of her natural hair type, but at least I know she knows of how much I probably need deep conditioning. And she probably knows more about the products that I need for my, for my hair. And so I'm like, oh, well, I'm looking for a beautician. Um, it's like, maybe we can connect and then I can hire you to be, you know, my, um, my beautician for now on. Because she was, and she was like, oh yeah, it's like, I'm almost graduated. I, I, I almost have all my hours. And so, um, it's, but like, I went to the school when she was there, um, one or two more times and then she finished and graduated. So I was like, okay, you're my beautician. I'm, I'm going to go to you. And so she starts doing my hair. And at the same time, I'm working on trying to grow my hair and I'm getting using hair growth oils and all kinds of stuff. But I start doing research on natural hair and it's like she kind of showed me how much are like some are, well, African-American people, African-American women despise or don't like their natural hair too because she has relaxed hair and everything but um but anyway so I'm going to her house she does um do my hair each time she does a really good job so I introduce her to my mom and my sister and my because my mom was like wow your hair looks so shiny it looks so healthy it's like who's doing your hair and i was like oh yeah i found this young lady at the beauty school and it's like um it's like she she's really good with my hair type and everything so but it's like i'm getting relaxers but it's like i'm getting tired of relaxers <clears throat> but in high school i was told you have bad hair you need this and this is the only way you're going to be able to present yourself dot 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 so so i'm doing the whole relaxers but i hate it i don't like it um so anyway so she gives me a relaxer and but then she gives me really good conditioning and she's recommending products and then i'm doing again research on different products to grow out my hair and everything and i'm looking up natural and then I forgot which YouTuber it was, but I remember watching her and I'm listening to her story and she was saying a lot of the same things I, I went through and people saying how her hair was not pretty or attractive or whatever and how she just kept practicing and studying and trying new products and moisturizing and stuff like that. And I was just like, huh. So I, and at the same time, I'm trying to save up money. I'm trying to pay, start paying off my student loans and stuff because like, I'm like, okay, once I'm done with school, Ooh, I'm gonna owe a pretty penny. So, so it's like, so I'm trying and I'm starting, trying to start investing money too. Cause I'm like watching a lot of people like either in my family or outside of my family i'm seeing people in some of the older generations they they have to now go back to work or they never get to leave or retire 
because they never invested, they never saved. Don't worry, On um, with my YouTube, I'm going to be talking about investing and everything because, well, I'm a nerd and um, I want, uh, like, especially within this capitalistic country that we have companies making billions, but at the same time, they can't pay their employees $20 minimum wage, even though... Yes, like if you look at how much food and gas and housing and everything has increased so much, but the wage has not caught up whatsoever. That isn't, but yeah, that's a different episode, but don't worry. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that. So anyway, um, yeah, so my mom and my sister start seeing her too and getting treatments and stuff. And they're just like, wow, she's so impressive and everything. And I, but I'm, and I'm saving money while going to her, but I'm letting her know, like, I'm thinking about going natural. But each time I say it, oh, what? Uh, 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 no, you're not. And she was like, you need relaxers. Like, you have bad hair. Mm-mm. And she would just laugh at me each time. And I'm like, okay, so instead of, helping me transition because if while I transition I'm still going to you after I transition you do great work it's like especially it's like if you can help me get my afro going or even maybe not afro puffs or if you can help me figure out different natural hairstyles it's like you're great with having like whenever I get my hair done people talk like I, I kept hearing compliments about how healthy my hair looked. So I was like, I was planning on staying with her. But every time, she just laughed. or was like, no, you better keep getting relaxers. Uh-uh. So I slowly stopped. I, start, I slowly spaced out as many times. And at the same time, I started getting booked for promotions a lot more. And so I'm working promotions and I'm working on my grad school and trying to save money and trying to invest and blah 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 everything but it's like I'm slowly seeing her less because I'm just like okay she puts me down with my hair she's laughing at me she's like she's ridiculing me and I'm just like okay sister to sister like you can't like do you not like your hair because I thought about this later after everything and I'm gonna finish this story in part two but to me, I'm like, do you not like your own hair? Why don't you like your own hair? Because you keep ridiculing me when I want to go natural and you have relaxed hair and everything. So part of me is just like, would you never go natural? Would you never embrace your natural curls? It's like you're putting me down and laughing at me. It's like and to the point where I remember I was... My sister was present one night We because we were both getting our hair done and I, an, I officially announced I'm going to go natural. Oh, I, I remember after that night for weeks, I felt so ugly. I felt so ugly. And this is why we need to promote the Crown Act. This is why we need to promote natural beauty and natural standards and embracing our natural like cultural side and everything of all nationalities and races and things like that because when I announced it and said it all I heard was laughter all I heard was like she laughed so hard she stopped doing my hair her hands were off she was leaning over laughing so hard and part of me was just like, okay, wow. And I, cause I'm just sitting there kind of like embarrassed in a way. Cause I'm just like, okay, this is my hair. This is coming out of my scalp. It's like, if you're saying I, my hair is bad, my hair is ugly. My hair is part of me. So now are you saying I'm ugly? Okay. Now I feel like I'm worthless or and some people are like, oh, you're exaggerating. Like, no, it's like one of the big things about going out in public is of our beauty standards, how people look at you and see you and judge you. And hair is part of it. 
like when Hollywood stars walk the red carpet or seen at restaurants or things, a lot of times they talk about the hair and like how it looks and the fa- how fashionable it is and how it makes them look. And so every day when people walk down the street, people do the same thing. So when she is laughing so hard and she, she tells me, you better not do that. And she was just like, oh my gosh, that would be awful. Oh, that'll be a nightmare. And I'm just like, are, are you, because I don't remember exactly everything she said, but for like five or 10 minutes, she is laughing and telling me, I better not, you better not. And I'm just like, you're forgetting I'm human. You're forgetting I'm human because if someone was to laugh at you like this, like you're running a business, I'm your customer. And yes, the customer is not always right, but at the same time, if you can just at least talk to your customer or even see like, okay, you know what? Let's let your hair grow a little naturally and let's see what your hair type is and in the next episode i'm gonna talk about how i found out about my naturalness because while or throughout this she her laughing and all this other stuff i was already embracing the natural side i was already experimenting and testing new products and things to find out like especially the healthy side of my natural hair because I grew up where it was always in braids but my hair went through so much damage because of the hot comb because of the the hair dryer and everything and so I never I never saw my natural curly hair I never is like and one reason why it looked the way it what it did was because of the heat damage that had happened to my hair and so like doing research and being able to see and like the knowledge that i gained which i appreciate a love and adore now but at the same time i'm still nervous to be in public with my natural hair i like i can count on both my hands how many times i've done it in my like within the last five ten years because of all the times I was told that I have bad hair, I have ugly hair, I better cut that off, I better relax it. Oh, it's like, oh, that's ugly. And just, how do you think a woman would feel when she hears that? Or I have picking cotton hair. It's like, what? Really? You really want to say that? You call me a queen, but you you want to say that so okay i'm gonna get ready for part two but yeah i'm gonna continue the story so get ready you know but i'll talk to you guys soon and just know that you're beautiful you're amazing your natural is beautiful and amazing embrace it it's like if you need help or need research like Find the right person that's going to motivate your beauty, enhance your beauty. And if you have questions, like make sure you don't go to someone that's going to make you feel unattractive and someone that's just going to make you feel like you can't be you, your genuine you, the you that you want to be. And because it's sad, because now I look back and I'm, I'm going to do part two so you can really know what happened, but. Don't allow someone to put you down and make you who they expect you to be. Put you in a box and shove you in the capacity that you don't know. That's not fair. But just know that I'm a woman, I am of color, and I am handicapable. But most importantly, I am human. Take care and check me out for the next episode. Bye.